if I can get in here like this. I've never done this before, so we're going to be able to get through this together. So you're all here for Yaya Han's Q&A. <laughs> and I can tell you're very excited, so I don't need to hype you up anymore. Um, she comes here all the way from Atlanta. She's a professional cosplayer and a fabulous human being. Um, and she can come out now if she wants. Yay! <laughs> Was there anything else about you you'd like to say before we start? Because I got kind of brief. Oh. Well, hello, everyone. Hi. Um, it's Hi, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's absolutely <laughs> lovely to be here. Um, HalCon invited me almost a year ago. And uh, from just the first email they sent, they have been super duper incredibly professional. And uh, I just I knew I would have a great time here. And I've had a great time so far and everybody's taking great care of me, and you guys are all so super nice, so I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> okay, so um, if anyone has any questions, which hopefully a lot of you do, you guys can start lining up behind this microphone right here. Just feel free, feel free. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's got it. Before we start, while people get up, I have one question, which I thought about really hard yesterday when they told me I was doing this. Sure. So. You are now a cosplay model, world renowned, awesome person. <laughs> when you were My not unofficial title, unofficial title. That's the Marsha title. Uh, <laughs> when you were not that, and you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? It was a toss up between uh, archaeologist and animator for Disney. <laughs> Both very both good. Are, yeah, both were kind of like reaching for the stars. Both were very, very different. Um, I actually grew up just really loving um, anime and manga. And I, you know, for the better like half of my uh, teenage years, I was like drawing every day. So I even like published a manga in Germany where I used to live. And so like art was a huge part of my life. And archaeology was also something I was very interested in because I had the fortune of being able to travel when I was young. Um, so I've been to like Egypt, Greece, and you know, ancient, ancient um, uh, countries. And so like those two were my big, big, big interests in life. And then like when I discovered cosplay, everything else just went away. <laughs> Which is like, oh man, this is what I want to actually do. And you know, it's just so weird. Life is so bizarre, like you never know where it's going to lead you, what turns it's going to take. It really is very unpredictable. My answer is way less cool. I wanted to be Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our first question. Hi, Yaya. Hi. Um, really big fan. And I just wanted to know, when you have um, larger props, how do you go about transporting them to the different conventions? Uh, great question. Um, it sometimes is unavoidable. Like, you have to... You have to, like, I have to take certain costumes with me if I drive somewhere or if it's, you know, depending on, like, luggage allowance and such. Uh, it, there's no easy answer for it. I mean, you can make props that um, detach in pieces, and that's, that's what I have done. Or I've made props that would, you know, fit the exact dimensions of my suitcase and such. So it's like you have to sort of think outside the box and plan ahead. but. You know, certain things like my Fiora sword, like there's really not much that I can do about it, you know? So it's like I have to take it on um, as an extra piece checked luggage if I fly. So uh, I like to take certain costumes like that to cons where I can drive or that are local. And so that's why I like far away conventions, I can never bring, you know, my biggest costumes. Like I can't bring Carmilla because it takes up two suitcases. and. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's why I try to make a variety of costumes and you just have to be kind of smart about, you know, planning ahead while you're making the pieces. Okay. Thank you. I just have uh, two questions for you. Mm -hmm. One, do you have a material or a fabric that is your favorite or least favorite to work for? And second, have you ever gotten almost all the way through a costume and then realized you went terribly wrong? Um, 
materials, like I really love feathers <laughs> and beads and things like that. Uh, I really like um, Dupioni silk and really like l luxurious fabrics. Those are my favorites to work with. Um, least favorite f material to work with probably is Madonna velvet, just because it's very slippery, it's difficult to line, uh, it doesn't have any structure to it. You have to like make sure that something is on the inside to give it the structure. Um, you know, like every material has its challenge uh, and advantage, and uh, I think it's more about like choosing long-lasting materials. So, like if you use um, pleather, like if you have to use pleather or vinyl or such, make sure it's a good quality because some of them they definitely like they pull apart very easily. The coating comes off, so I like to buy those in person where I can really like pull on it and make sure that it's going to stay up. So. Don't go cheap. <laughs> uh, the second question, uh, what was it again? <laughs> Have you ever gotten almost all the way through a costume and realized that you made either an error or you went really wrong? Have you ever had to scrap a costume? Uh, I, I have, but I never scrapped a costume that I like almost finished. It's usually, you know, I either lose interest or something else takes precedent be it a project or, you know, whatever comes up regarding my business. Uh, so yeah, I have certain costumes that I have never finished before, but I don't want to ever think of a costume like it's a failed project, because it's always about like searching for solutions and making it work. So, you know, sometimes if it takes, like if I put a costume away and then I come back to it after, you know, a few weeks or even months, you can, you can restart it and uh, you can just like keep going, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey. Um, Hello. In Heroes of Cosplay, in the first episode there, it seems like everybody else, all the other contestants and stuff were, were afraid or they're almost <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to do it when they found out you were going to be the judge. Is that a warranted thing or is that just sort of part of the drama that you guys did? Well, I mean, uh, given that most of the cast members were people that I suggested, that were friends of mine to begin with, you know, I think that's more like they were trying to introduce me as this uh, this authority. So you're not a wicked witch or something like that, right? <laughs> that's up to you to decide. You know, if you want to believe what you see on TV, then I can't help you there. Uh, but it was really like they they didn't know how to introduce this world it really is like it's such a new world um, they didn't know how the audience would handle it they put a lot of money into it so for them the stakes were really high to make sure that you know even the lowest common denominator audience could follow the story and could somehow engage and the only way for them to do that, I think, was to focus on the competition aspect and focus on the stress and the doom and gloom and the, you know, everything is like last minute and such, where, you know, for, uh, for us cosplayers, you know, this is a fun thing. If we don't finish a costume in time for a convention, there's always another convention you can make it for. There's like, I never feel the pressure of like having to, you know, work in the hotel room up until the co the contest has already started. Like that's that doesn't happen. You're disqualified if you don't have your costume done by you know uh, two o'clock that day. Like there's no way that they'll let you in the contest when you signed up, but your costume isn't done. So it's like certain things. I think it was just about how to tell the story, including you know making people seem as if they were afraid of me or something. Whereas you know I. I've always been a very fair judge, and um, I'm very tolerant of all kinds of cosplaying. It's not like I'm like always critical of people. It's like if I'm a judge and my responsibility is to pick winners for the convention, then I will take that job seriously. But all other times when I'm cosplaying, when I see people cosplaying, it's like whatever you want to do. If you want to purchase your costume, if you want somebody else to make it for for you, it's totally up to you. It's, this is fun. This is creative expression, you know, so. Yeah, thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, what advice can you give to people who are going to start making their own cosplay? Um, well, I think uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, know that every cosplayer had to start somewhere. So don't feel intimidated if you see, like, really amazing costumes. You're just like, I can never do this or something. like. Everybody had to start somewhere, you know, everybody had to learn from 
um, <laughs> knowing how to sew a straight stitch and it's like it is a progression you know for me the progression started many years ago and so I've had a lot of time to learn things uh, these days it's actually a lot easier for people to get into cosplay because you have all these resources out there you can use YouTube to learn all kinds of techniques and you can Google tutorials and you know, even like look at how other people make costumes to see what materials they use, what techniques they use, and then go research those techniques. And so I think it just takes a lot of dedication as well as like the want to make a costume. And uh, just know that everything takes time and it's okay. Like if you want to start with a simple project, go for that and sort of like expand upon, upon your skill set as you progress along. And uh, it's like for me it took you know, years to accumulate enough skills to make certain costumes, but it's like you end up getting there slowly, or sometimes really fast, depending on how dedicated you are. So. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>